Okay, the topic is 3D equilibrium of rigid bodies. Uh, when we talk about rigid body, the difference between rigid body and particles is rigid body is million thousands of particles. They came together as one object. So particle, it doesn't have any dimension. So you don't see any rotation on it. But once you got to a rigid body, the rigid body can rotate. Now, before I move on to the restriction or restraint, I talk about something called degree of freedom. Degree of freedom meaning that an object has six degree of freedom. It can move in X axis, it can move in Y, it can move in Z, it can rotate about X axis, it can rotate about Y axis and it about six axis. So in total, you got six degree of freedom for an object. Now, when we create a restriction, meaning that I don't allow the object to move on that particular condition. Like when we talk about cables, so let's get it started with cables. In cable, you have one degree of restriction. So the object would not be able to move along the cable because you restrain it on that direction. So in this degree of restriction, the beauty of it is that you can actually find the unit vector, you can find the direction of that cable and put it into your equation. For something like roller, rocket, smooth surface, these types of support, we got one degree of restriction, and that degree of restriction, the direction of it is perpendicular to the cross, to perpendicular to the surface edge. What does that even mean? If you look, consider a roller gear or a smooth surface here. So this roller can move up and down. You can rotate it about any axis you want. The only thing that you cannot do with the roller is that it cannot go to the floor, right? It cannot, and the floor restrains this. So there's one restriction, one restraint, and that is the floor. So we already know that if you are in contact with the surface, the reaction is always normal to it, which is gonna be perpendicular to the surface. Again, we talk about this in friction, in 2D equilibrium, and then we are already aware of the direction of the support. So the next thing is ball and socket. Unfortunately, I don't have a pen holder here to show you, but that would be something like this, like a pen holder. So a pen holder can rotate about any axis, right? You can rotate about X axis, Y axis, Z axis. You can rotate about any, anywhere you want, right? You can rotate it this way, this way, and about Z axis. So when we can rotate it, there is no restriction on it, right? So the degree of freedom, you can rotate it about X, Y, and Z axis, and the degree of restraints. The restriction is that this thing cannot move, right? It's fixed, the pen holder, keep it fixed like this, and then you wouldn't be able to take it home. You cannot move it in X, you cannot move it in Y, and you cannot move it in Z. So basically, when you're looking at it through a 3D object, the first thing that you need to figure out is what types of support is this? And then if we figure out the type of support, we can put in that free body diagram, which is very important, by the way, if you don't draw a free body diagram, I'm not sure how you are even driving your equations. So uh, then we can actually put it. So if I have a, a pen holder or ball and socket, in this case, I'm going to put three reactions, Fx, Fy, and Fc. If you see them, they are labeled here. And then we can actually find them into our equations. Moving on to single journal bearing. The single journal bearing is that, uh, look like a shaft. The shaft can rotate, right? So it does have one degree of rotation like this. It can move back and forth, which you can see in this case, the shaft is across a long Y axis. So there is no restriction on the Y. But, but because this is the shaft, you wouldn't be able to rotate it about the x-axis or about z-axis. So in this case, because I cannot move it, I'm going to put one reaction force on the x, one reaction force on the z, and then a reaction moment on the x and reaction moment on z. Four unknowns in one location. So if you have a bearing, single journal bearing, you have four restraints on it. It can just rotate and slide on the y, but you have all these restrictions on it. 
how about I have a square shaft? If you have a square shaft, sliding is still there, but rotation is not. You cannot rotate it. A square shaft. Now in this case, I have five unknowns. And the five unknowns are f of x, f of y, and again, in, I don't, sorry, the f is not there. So the three moments, because you cannot rotate it about any axis, I'm gonna have three reaction moments and then two reaction force. Why do you put a force on the y? Because you can move it in the y. You can move it back and forth in the y. The thrust journal bearing is the same as journal bearing, but the head of it has a building on it. So in this case, still I have the rotation, but I cannot take it out. And majority of all shafts are like this. You don't want a shaft to come out, right? So you put something on the back of it to hold it. So in this case, I have a reaction on the Y, reaction force. So three reaction force and two reaction moments. How many I have here? I have six reactions, six degree of restriction and one degree of motion. And that degree of motion is rotation about Y axis. Moving on to, uh, again, in this case, I have something like a hinge or I can call it a pin. So the way the pin look like is like, look at, look at my two fingers. I'm holding this pencil, right? So I only have one degree of rotation, right? You cannot, so I can have only one degree of rotation. In this case, the pin can only rotate about the X axis. It cannot rotate about Z axis. It cannot rotate about Y axis. You cannot move it anywhere because it's already pinned. So I cannot move it in X, Y, Z. So three reaction force. Cannot rotate about the Z in this particular picture. Cannot rotate about Y. It can only rotate about the X axis. So I have where you can rotate, where you can move. You don't put reaction force. When it um, cannot move, that's where you put the reaction force. Again, five degree of restriction, one degree of freedom for a pin. Fixed support is could be your life. You cannot move, you cannot rotate, you cannot do anything. So when, when an object glued to the floor, like again, I can give you the example of um, studs, right? We use them for fencing or something like that. You dig a hole, you put the post in there and then you cement it. So you cannot rotate it, you cannot move it, you cannot do anything. In this case, it cannot rotate about any of the axis and it cannot move. So I have six degree of restriction on it. Um, now, moving on to, again, I talked briefly about the support. I wanna talk about one more thing before I put, uh, jump into the problem. Something we call them align system. Align system is a system where you have more than a bearing. Like for instance, you have a bearing and ball and socket, or you have more than two bearings, or you have bearing plus pin, what does align system mean? In align system, you neglect the reaction moments, right? If the system is aligned, you, you neglect the reaction moment. So let me just to look into one problem related to align system. In this case, I have one, again, I have a ball and socket at A. At point B, I have one bearing. So you can see you have a combination of bearing and ball and socket. So you would be able to ignore the reaction moments. So when you ignore the reaction moments here, you would be ended up at, again, you see, I put already, for instance, I put the MX, but I cross it out. I put the MZ, I cross it out because I will not consider these two because the system is aligned. And then how many unknowns I have in this particular picture? Uh, again, I have, two forces from the bearing. Again, I neglected the system is aligned. I neglected the moment. I have a smooth surface at point C. So one reaction at C, if C going up, then three forces, AX, AY, AZ on the ball and circuit. So on, overall, I have six unknowns. So I would be able to solve a problem like this because you have six unknowns, six equations, then you can solve it. Again, in, in the next video, I will talk about how to set up these equations and how to solve them. So basically, everything starts with this page for 
uh, support reactions. 